بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعقبة للمتقين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على محمد خاتم النبيين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم افتح فتوه العارفين اللهم افتح علينا حكمتك وانشر علينا رحمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا ذا الجلال والإكرام الحمد لله praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gathered in this beautiful majlis in this blessed night of Rabi al-Awwal a month in which we're always going to be remembering and connecting more deeper to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this year, Alhamdulillah, the Pro- Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us tawfiq together every single night. And it's been a beautiful, beautiful month. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Amen. give us tawfiq, inshallah, mazid, so we can carry on all the way through our lives. Mm-hmm. Not just Rabi al-Awwal. We're not, we're not seasonal lovers. <laughs> we're, we're, we're perpetual lovers. <laughs> Isn't it? That's the way we need to be. We're not, we have to, honestly. We have to look at the... Allah Allah, if you really knew him, every moment of your lives would be in a state that you'd always want to know how you can connect to him. How's your day going to be better with him in it? How's your work? How can you include the Prophet in your work somehow? Get some sort of sunnah when you walk in. Get some sort of a sunnah when you're in your office, when you're at your work or when you get in your car. Every single thing he left for us because he saw Salaam didn't just come to you to give you a religion. He wasn't just a religion, but he was a way of life. He came to show us how we could be what Allah destined for us to be. And that's Ashraf al-Makhluqat. A'la iliyin. From the greatest of them. Of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the best of them. But that is only if you're going to be treading in his footsteps and remembering him. So connecting to him in this beautiful month has been beautiful. And that the Qasida Muhammadiyah really... We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless uh, Shaykh, mashallah, because it was his uh, you know, idea, mashallah, that we can we, we start that as a beautiful qasida during the the nights of uh, Rabi al-Awwal. And it's been an absolute amazing uh, experience. Last few days remain. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill it, inshallah, like he's done every single night. It's been just something new. It's Some, been something different every single night. And may Allah bless us, inshallah, with acceptance more than anything, inshallah. Amen. And really give us that love of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How do we then end the beautiful, you know, month? How do you end? It's a sad time, isn't it? It's a sorry time. But not for those who then continue then, even after Ramadan. Because it's no different for them. These are for those who need excuses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this month. So that you can have an excuse that... Mm, I needed something to push me a bit. And they're the ones who then reconnect to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's for the majority of us. But sometimes we don't have we have a disconnect, we're busy with dunya, we're busy with whatever. Now it's time to connect back and never let it be severed ever again. The Prophet the Musannif Ali Rahman, sometimes whatever Allah Ta'ala does, he does for a reason. Because we finished the last chapter off in the in the Wasal Wusu, the Shamail of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Where he says, فَقَدْ كَانَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِذَا سُرَّ إِسْتَنَارَ وَجْهُهُ كَأَنَّهُ الْقَمَرُ When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would become happy, his face would beam as if he was the, the moon. The thing about the moon is that the hilal is what gives you the beginning of the new, moon, the new month. And it gives you a bit of an ending as well, doesn't it? It gives you the end. And it's always going to be this hilal and this moon that you have to have a connection with. When they're out gazing at the, the sun and the moon to see when will this new month come in. Yeah, as crazy as it sounds, people used to do that for every single month and not just for Ramadan. Not just the moon wars at the time of Ramadan. It's sunnah to do every. Even if you just walk out your house, as our teacher said, just stare at the sky. Even if it's rain, even if it's really, really cloudy. Sunnah, just look up, just try, try to find it. Find out which horizon it's going to be on. Find out a place where you can... Even if you can't see it, the, the fact that you've gone out and had a look, sunnah. But the people who will be looking, they'll be looking to see their beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa Even that would remind them of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa Because he had a munawwar face, bright, illuminated. 
So when they see something illuminated, it only reminds them of his Habib al Mustafa. That's why the Musannif then latches onto this and it's appropriate because we're almost at the end of this beautiful month. Fasl al Thamin fi sifati dahikihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa buka'ihi wa utasihi. This is the chapter in which we're going to see what was it that gave the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi your beautiful face even more of a, 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 a sparkle, a shine, beam. It was his smile Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam out of one of the things that would be illuminating in the face of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is what we're going to be dealing with. But what would it be like to see the smile of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? We were in a majlis the other day and one of the, one of the poets, he, was, uh, he wrote a poem and, he, and it's about the, the beautiful smile of the Prophet ﷺ. But he says that he was blessed to see the Prophet ﷺ in his dream. So he says when he was, when he is describing in his poem the smile of the face and the, the features of the Prophet ﷺ, he wasn't as if he was mentioning something which is so abstract or something that he just wants to write about. He might have read about it. This is experiential words that were coming out of his mouth. So I asked him, I said, is it that when you, when you close your eyes, you can, you can see, he says, I don't need to close my eyes. Mm-hmm. Because when I'm saying the words, I'm seeing the smile of the face of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's another level that is. Because once you see it, you can't be mistaken. Once you see it, it's unforgettable. That's the smile of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But how did he smile? If you don't know it, you don't know what to look out for. When you know it, you're going to know that the Prophet ﷺ had the most beautifulest of smiles. Well, buka, the buka is the, the crying, the weeping of the Prophet ﷺ, and his sneezing, if you will. These are three beautiful you know, qualities of the Prophet ﷺ that everyone has. We all see people smiling. It's a beautiful quality to have, and everyone should smile. There's nothing to be gloomy about. We're from the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How can we be gloomy? He was Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who was optimistic in everything. He had the most tragedy after tragedy in his life. But yet he would always smile. There's that quality that they always mention in, in the Shamail of Tirmizi in the Hadith. The Da'im Al-Fikra. That he, would, he was someone who was always con- concerned. He was always worried. That was with Allah. And that was his personal thing. <coughs> That he'd be worried about the Ummah, he'd be worried about us, he'd be worried about what's going to happen on the Day of Judgment. He's worried about if the people are not listening. He's worried about the people who are not accepting his call to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His worship, he was worried about all of these things, but did he show it to the people when he met? He always had that beautiful <laughs> smile, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Never did you have a conversation with the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, except that you saw a glimpse of that beautiful smile, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, people that, that, that we speak to who have seen the Prophet وسلم, I'll say 80% of them that I've spoken to personally that they always mention about the smile of the Prophet وسلم, and being part of that dream that I saw the Prophet وسلم, what do you remember about him? And they'll, they'll mention about his face and they'll mention about his eyebrows strikingly strikingly and they'll mention about the smile of the, of the Prophet وسلم, special eyes, special hearts May Allah give us that, inshallah. Amen. But what is it? What is a smile? In the Arabic language, the Prophet, the Musanif mentions, feel dahik. Dahik is going to be, this almost going to be like three levels of smiling. So the Prophet, the, all right, the lowest level, if you will, is going to be a smile. In Arabic, they call that tabassum. Tabassum means just smiling with a closed mouth, no sound. Bila, bila saut. Dahik is almost like the middle. We'll come back to that point in a minute. In fitahu ma'asotin qalil. He says almost like with a slight opening of the mouth. So you're smiling, you're still smiling, but it's got a bit of an opening of the mouth and it's got a slight sound as well. Sometimes it smile sound comes out, sometimes it doesn't. Well qahkaha. That's the that's the highest of them, if you will. Or we could say the lowest of them. Qahkaha is when when lol. <laughs> Laugh out loud. That's exactly what it means. In fitahu bi So when you when you're laughing till everybody can see you at the back of your gob, and everybody can hear you down the street. That's that's kahkaha. Now look at the balance of the Prophet sallallahu Out of all that range, where was the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this? Most of the time, it's tabassum. If he went past that, it'd be to the point where it'd be dahik. 
So he'll be smiling. Some teeth will be showing. You'll see some of the teeth they're going to mention. And the Sahaba, they didn't just have this like, yeah, we saw him smiling. They even documented which teeth they saw of, of the Prophet ﷺ. Yeah. Of what extent? Was it the front ones only? Was it the side ones? Was it the molars? Was it the pre-molars? Which ones did he see? Yeah. That's the detail that the, the Prophet, they used to see the Prophet ﷺ. Khasatan lil insan. He says, Dahik in the Arabic language is specifically when, when, a, um, when a human smiles or when, when he laughs as well. And when it, when it's, do you ever see animals smiling? Do you not? <laughs> do you, he's seen one, so. <laughs> in Arabic, that wouldn't be class of dahik, though, would it? <laughs> the, se- the second thing that we're going to be discussing in this is going to be the other, the other uh, emotion is going to be crying. Allah. That's a natural quality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in many of us. When, when, at the time when the Prophet ﷺ was crying over somebody who had passed away, and they said, Ante ya Rasulullah, the, you know, the, the, the men of Quraysh, they said, he goes, you're crying. That's not very manly. And the Prophet ﷺ says, he said, this is something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in the hearts of people, rahmah, mercy. That's what comes natural. It's not something which we bring on because the, the people are paid criers. We, we'll come to that in a minute. Buka is going to be of many kinds. There's going to be many kinds of people who cry or weep, if you will. But buka or rahmatan wa ra'fatan. Out of absolute mercy or uh, kindness, if you will. Buka al khawf wal khashya. When you're scared of uh, something, you've got fear of something, it makes you absolutely cry. That, that's, that's to a point where you can make tears come out of your, your eyes. Wa buka al mahabba wa shawq. Cry out of absolute love. I said same, Subhanallah, Mashallah. Wa buka of farhin wa sururin. Happiness, out of absolute, you're going to be ecstatic, of absolutely, extremely happy. You have some sort of good news, or something makes you really happy, and and you you have tears that are absolutely, any, of joy, tears of joy. That's the one. There's no other word. Wa buka jaza min wurudi mu'lim ala shaksi la yahtamilu. Crying over some pain or, or something, we, 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 either that can afflict you or that can be a, a, affect uh, affect you or afflict you. What bukal huznim? You can have cry of almost like sadness or sorrow, deep sorrow. You got you have something which you you missed or you you're longing for something. Wasn't that the tears of Abu Bakr Siddiq? Uh, he was he was something that was that was affecting him that firaq when he couldn't see the Prophet وسلم, oh. with him by him. This is almost like fake, fake tears. And <laughs> the example they give. No. it Kabuka in Mara, Ligadiha, in Gadi Mokahil. I'm just going to leave that out. This is fake tears, everybody knows. Just, just, Kabuka uh, Mustajar Alehi, Kabuka in Naiha. Hide tears. I, and people need to understand that we don't have it in this in our culture now, but in the old days and certainly in other countries that they would have, they would you know at the time of anyone's uh, death, they would hire people to cry. So they, that they would be their job. They would hire them and they would sit inside the house and they would cry in front of the people. You know, remind them and, and anybody would come in. They would just like increase their crying even more, right. and just so they can say you know it is it's a house that has as somebody died. And they would usually even take it out of the deceased's wealth as well. That's a, that's a jahiliya. That's, that's something which is fake. But these are no doubt tears though. It's almost like when some people see another person crying and it makes you want to cry. Why are you crying? You don't know. You just I saw you crying, so I saw you crying. That's another one. And number ten, buka'u kadib, 
وهو بقاع مسر على ذنب and likewise crocodiles is easy <laughs> when 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 the fake tears these are these are almost like real crocodile tears where you you're just trying to uh, either get out of some sort of trouble isn't it have you was it you who didn't do your homework you get away with it sometimes or you either you you you've done sins so Allahu Akbar you do sin so much that it overburdens you and makes tears come out. Right? There's no reason other than the burden of sin itself. These are all tears, and we're speaking about that. What did the Prophet ﷺ have? How do you know the difference between a tear which is um, uh, out of happiness and out of sor- sorrow? The ulama say that the taste, not telling you to go collect it and drink it. We say that the taste is usually that when it's, when it's out of sorrow, it's salty. It's a salty taste. And when it's out of happiness, sweet. It's a, it's a natural uh, taste. That's, that's how you tell. It's hot. Imam, uh, Imam Busaybi Rahmatullahi mentions it at the beginning, uh, in, in his first chapter, in the opening chapters, about the, you know, the, you know, how his tears are uncontrollable of the lover of the Prophet. And he speaks about the, the ones that are out of sorrow. He's coming out of deep, intense love and longing for the Prophet. Alayhi wa sallam. Allah Allah. You got the words there? Over here, and then the last one is going to be the sneezing, how the Prophet used to sneeze. And these are things which are almost like um, the Prophet kind of yuhibbu al-utas wa yukrahu al-tathaub. The Prophet used to love the sneeze. If anybody sneezed, he would say, Ya Allah, he'd make a dua, instruct you to say, Alhamdulillah. But he would dislike the yawning. Because he says in another hadith of uh, Abu Dawud Sharif, that he says the yawning is from the shaitan. And that's why one of the, one of the, the almost like the funny stories, when, when I went to Darul Uloom when I first started, I didn't really know my Urdu that well. And one of our teachers, I was, it was the first thing in the morning, first couple of weeks in, and one of our, I, I just kept yawning, you know, when you can't control it. So I was one of them, and I was right in front of my teacher. So he said it once, he stopped his class, he looked at me with the corner of his eye, he says, Bagasa <laughs> Nemaro. So I, I, I just I did I didn't understand it. So I thought he was talking to somebody else. So I, I yawned again, and then and he says Bagasa <laughs> Nemaro. So then he's looking at me a bit more angrier this time, and then th- it was almost at the end of the class. I'm thinking, I said, what is this? So I'm looking at him. I said, he's talking to you, to, to the person next to me. Third time he says, and if anyone knows uh, this teacher, you're gonna say, Molana Anas knows. And then the third time he said it, just as he was walking, and he said it really, really loudly. So when he walked out, I'm asking my friend, I said, what's, what's this bagasa going on? I said, who is he? Who's he speaking about? He says, yawning. He says, stop yawning. I said, how can you stop a yawn? He says, that's really, really rude, first of all, to do it right in front of your teacher. Secondly, it's from shaitan. So if you ever do have it, then at least try to force yourself not to uh, keep your mouth closed or cover it if you can. The worst thing you see when somebody yawns, and that is from shaitan, and that's what they're trying to force it, force it into you almost like that this is the way you should, that's something we shouldn't be doing in a, 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 a lesson of. We're all there one day, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say I never did that again. <laughs> so the Prophet ﷺ, this beautiful chapter is going to be a beautiful one which uplifts us at the end of Rabi al-Awwal because it says, Kana Rasulullah Sallallahu <laughs> starts off with this beautiful hadith about the smile. He says, إِذَا إِفْتَرَّ ضَاحِكًا إِفْتَرَّ عَنْ مِثْلِ السَّنَ الْبَرْقِ إِذَا تَلَعْلَعَ وَأَنْ مِثْلِ حَبِّ الْغَمَامِ The Prophet ﷺ, whenever he would begin to smile, iftarra mean, uh, when, when it would become apparent, a smile on him, iftar عَنْ مِثْلِ السَّنَ الْبَرْقِ It would be like a flash of a, you know, like you could see the light emanating from that smile, oh. as if it was like the flash, he says, uh, uh, in, in, a, in a dark night, if you saw a flash of lightning, <laughs> that's how immediate the, the, the light would be. Not that it would be a danger, but it would be a pleasing light. Either, either to like when, it, when it would sparkle or flash. <laughs> or it would be like, he says, white hailstones. You know, when, when, when you've got a bit of sun shining against a hailstone, now you picture how white that, that's going to be. My Prophet ﷺ had even beauty, beautiful. That was just to give you a, a you know, a, a closeness for us to understand. What kind of a smile? Them pearly whites? That's the pearly whites of my Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa kana sallallahu alayhi wa sallam jullah dahiki hi tabassum. And you speak about dahik, 
let, don't get confused. He's trying to clear it there. He says if you speak of dahikan, dahik means dahik. That's it. That's your, yeah, your fangs are the ones straight immediately after it. He says it's when you smile, you just begin to see that just your your fangs are just just past that. That's a dahik. So he said it isn't what you think it is in the literal sense. The Prophet Sallallahu most of his smiles, most of his laughing would be just a smile, a like closed mouth. That's out of the absolute humility that the Prophet Sallallahu would have. And you know, you, you hear, you know, almost like these, um, it's, it's, it's a modern phenomenon where people are just going to these, um, um, they, they could even class it as Muslim comedy shows where they could be laughing hours on end. And that wasn't the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that you could just laugh endlessly you know, laughing for hours, two hours. There's no doubt. Kathar to dahik to me to qalb. Too much laughing kills your heart, kills your heart, deadens the heart. Then what do you do to a dead heart? Revive it. It needs reviving. The revival comes from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, bringing Allah. it back to the that balance. That it's not that you be too serious. You know, you don't be too you know, joking all the time. Always laughing. Always, uh, you know, everyone can hear and say, oh, so and so's come in because you can hear him laughing. And that's not the way the Prophet was. Everything was in balance. And the Prophet said, if you knew which I, which what I know, you'd laugh little and cry much. Allah. Because that's life. It's about seriousness. When Hazrat Umar, he's from the mother of the Rasul, that's the beauty of the Prophet. Look at the, the Sahaba. Look how Allah chose them for, because each of them had a different quality. And did the Prophet stop any of them? No, he didn't. Because you're going to see Abu Bakr Siddiq, the generous one, full of wisdom. As Umar, you're going to see, full of justice. As from the Prophet he took from there. He said, oh, he's a bit harsh. No, he wasn't harsh. That's from the Prophet When you can love for the sake of Allah, and yet you get angry for the sake of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet says. Now, everyone had a different quality. And the Prophet, when has Umar, they used to see people like laughing all the time or too much. It's striking with the stuff. It's a, it's a, it's a, life is about seriousness. It's not about joking. Either you found something funny or you're ridiculing something or you're doing something which is not going to benefit you in this world. Just get on with it. And he, needs to, he needs to hit him. He needs to just tap him on the shoulder and he's like he used to do when the people walk slow. There's seriousness. Life is about seriousness. You've got somewhere to go. Keep moving. That's what the problem that has Umar, that was his time. He's, he learned that from somewhere. He learned it from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and there was a balance. There has to be not too much of this and not too much of that. But the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he did smile, there was some. The Prophet had a smile. That's a beautiful smile. One Abdullah ibn ibn al Harithi radiyallahu taala anhu قال the next hadith of Tirmizi as well mentioned in the Shamail of Tirmizi as well. قال the Prophet sallallahu alaihi the Sahaba says. ما رأيت أحدا أكثر تبسما من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. So he says, if you were to let, let me take you back into Medina, jump in this uh, your, this time machine, go back to Medina, all the way in the time of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Who wants to come on board? <laughs> he says, let me tell you, if you looked at all the people inside of Medina and you tried to look to see who's the one who smiles the most. He said, I haven't seen anybody who's more smiling than my Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah, Allah. Now that's a person who's always happy and he gives joy to other people. Why? Because if you're happy, it's infectious. It'll always make somebody else smile. When Aisha radiallahu anhu anha wa ardaha as Aisha radiallahu says anha qalat ma ra'aytu Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam qaddu mustajbi an dahikan hatta ara minhu lahawatihi that's all one uh, verse, sorry. I've never seen the Prophet ﷺ, like وسلم. excessively laughing or so extremely laughing, openly laughing until that I've ever seen the back of his throat. Lahawat is the, what do you call it? Uvula, whatever. Uvula. Uvula. Yeah, that word. <laughs> that dangly thing, that uh, <laughs> boxing uh, thing at the back of your throat. That, that you never saw that of the Prophet ﷺ. The, the, she said he never got to that He was never that much And that shows moderation in everything Isn't it Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَأَنْ أَبْدِ اللَّهِ الْحَارِثِ أَيْوَنْ قَالَ مَا ضَحِكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم إِلَّا تَبَسُّمًا Same again reinforcing the ضَحِكَ of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Was tabassum It was a smile It was a smile 
وكان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يحدث حديثا إلا تبسما. He says that never could you have a conversation with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that wouldn't have a smile inside of it, and you'd always be smiling even when he's talking to people صلى الله عليه وسلم. Where the where are the followers of the Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم in this? And you just just gauge it tomorrow morning. When you're driving about, just look at some of the Muslims. I'm just saying, not generally. I'm making a generalization here, but just try to gauge, like, and see who the followers of the Prophet are. Who are the ones that are smiling? It's a Friday. So there's a lot to be. You have, there's a lot to smile about. Try it on a Monday. See if it changes. <laughs> but really, where's that smile gone? And people are walking to Fajr. Uh, we've seen it honestly in other co- in other places where you where you're always surrounded by that smile. Even people are walking to like tahajjud and they're tired, and people are still smiling and they can they can greet you with a smile. They're going to do the wudu and you, you're doing your wudu. It's a different environment. That can be brought here. It just takes one person to do that smile, bring that smile. If we can take something from this Rabbil Awal and say that I'm going to make that smile infectious, I'm going to. I'm going to spread it amongst my people, my family, my work, colleagues, everyone. That's a beautiful sunnah. And inshallah, Allah will bless you with seeing his beautiful smile, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَكَانَ الضَّحِكُ أَصْحَابِهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عِنْدَهُ He's saying, and the Prophet, the, the companions of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, their smile, surprise, surprise, would be, at the basum. Why? Because they took from the Prophet Sallallahu He's not going to be smiling while they're going to be laughing. They did. Exa- they looked at the Sunnah, how he did it, how much he did it, what extent he did it. That's how much they used to take note of every single Sunnah that the Prophet Sallallahu did. Min ghairi sautin. And there's no doubt in the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu the Sahaba, they never raised their voice, not even in laughing. Even if it's something which was really, really funny. That their voice would always be lowered down. Iqtida'an bihi. Firstly, because they saw it happening. I he sallallahu never raised his voice laughing. And that's why they always kept it down. Wa tawqeeran lahu. And out of absolute reverence and respect for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La tarfu aswatakum. Don't raise your voice in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over his voice. Have some adab and respect amongst that. وَكَانُوا إِذَا جَلَسُوا عِنْدَهُ And when, when they were sat with him, with him or by him كَأَنَّمَا عَلَى رُؤُوسِهِمُ الطَّيْرِ What was the hal of the Sahaba when they were with the Prophet ﷺ? Were, were they fidgeting or were they, were they lounging? Were they stretching their legs out? Were they, the Prophet ﷺ, no doubt made them feel relaxed and at ease and, and there, there was no, he wasn't like an army uh, general and stuff Attention, you know, everybody's, there wasn't But there was that respect out of absolute love but they would be as if they were sat so still, as if they were uh, birds perched on their heads. What, do, what does that mean? It says that if they were birds, they would be still sat there. Because they're not moving, they're not fidgeting, they're not moving around. The Prophet was there. And they would sit with absolute adab and reverence and respect, not fidgeting. Fidgeting in, in any culture that will be classed as something bad, you haven't got his attention. Everybody's attention was the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's the adab. May Allah give us that, inshallah. Amen. Wa kana sallallahu alaihi wasallam idha jara bihi dhahik wada ayyadahu ala fihi. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, whenever he would, if it would be so humorous that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would get past the tabassum, that he would, his mouth would open, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would cover it with his hand. Why is that? Out of out of the, the, the humbleness and shyness of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Makana sallallahu alaihi wasallam min adhakin nas. The Prophet was the most, the one who's most like uh, smiling or laughing, but in the sense of tabassum and in med- moderation. Wa'atiya bihim nafsan. He's the most purest of souls or, or hearts. Warada fi ahaditha anna Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam dhaika hatta badat nawajizuhu. That the Prophet ﷺ comes in a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ did then, they read the R hadith, now he's going to mention the other end. That the R hadith that he did go past a smile, the Prophet ﷺ in some hadith that he actually says that you can see the molars of, yani the molars, the first molars, yeah? 
ay darasuhu wa in kana al ghalib min ahwali sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but then he's reaffirming because even though he's going to mention them he says that most of the time you're going to see that it was just a smile so he's going to mention some hadith in which the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa laughed wa an abi dharr radiyallahu anhu قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اني لا اعلم اول رجل رجل يدخل الجنه سديث كذا انا ممكن اكون بيتشر الله الله ولا بخلك سو رحمه الله عليه او بيتشر المسلم شريف when he was teaching us and the way he showed us and he smiled and he goes because that's what i remember my teacher الله Mela fill his grave with you. Oh, it was a real blessing. Amen. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he begins mentioning. He says, "Inni la alamu." Indeed, I know the first man to enter paradise. Wa akhiru rajulin yakhruju min al nar, and I know the last of the men to exit out of the hellfire. Yuta bir rajuli yom al qiyamati fi yuqal. So the, a man will be brought forth on the day of judgment and, and it will be said to him He's brought forth on the plains of Hashar and he's going to be he's, and he's, he's said to the angels Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say He says present to him his, a few of his small deeds his, 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 his minor sins So these are the minor little ones he says, just present them to him. And he says, present them as if that's it. While, whilst hiding the big ones. For you call Allah. How are we going to be on the day of judgment? This is. Inshallah, I hope it is humorous. Inshallah, like this. For you call Allah. Amilta yawma kada. Kada wa kada. He says, do you remember this sin that you did on such and such a day? وَهُوَ مُقِرٌ وَلَا يُنْقِرْ وَلَا يُنْكِرْ And he's, he's affirming everyone. He says, yeah, I did that. Yeah, I did that. And it's not him who's going to affirm. Don't forget, we know on the day of judgment, you haven't got the power. Your tongue is going to be given life. Your arms, your limbs, everything, your legs, everything will be testifying against you or for you or against you. Everything. You can't, you can't, you can't uh, deny it that day. You can't, even if you hire the best solicitor in this world, to come for you on that day, he's not. He's, he's going to fall short. He's not going to be able to do it. <laughs> and, he, and all this time, he's been kept away from the the big, the major sins. This is all these all these ones that you've you've agreed to. This is, Allah says, change them into good deeds. So he says, cool. He says. <laughs> if my bad deeds are changing into good deeds, he says, I'm gonna make he says, For yakulu inna li la araha hauna. He says, actually, I've got some other uh, bad deeds as well. I haven't seen I didn't see that anywhere presented here. Allah. He says Abu Dhar says, and this is the time when I saw the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam smile. He, he laughed so much that his his molars became you know, molars Allah. after the 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 fangs they became exposed. Allah. A person can you imagine that in front of Allah? He's if you don't mention them, then it's like that's a good thing. I think maybe I've got away with them other ones. <laughs> but when he saw that they've been turned into good deeds, and suddenly it's like, but they, I'm sure I did some more. <laughs> you cannot change them into good deeds. So making us laugh, but can you imagine on that day? What kind of a person? I mean, there's some people that naturally just are you know, humorous as well. Mashallah, they bring joy to, to any gathering. One Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, or Allahu says, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud in this hadith, he says, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inni la'arifu akhira ahli nari khurujan. That I, I, indeed, I know the last one to be exited out or taken out of the hellfire. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, Rajulun min hazafan. If he's the last one to be taken out, he's been in there for a long time. And that's the, the, uh, uh, the aqeelah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, that every person who's got even a, a single drop or a dot of iman in his heart will, will one day eventually come out 
spending after sp- spending or whatever Allah's destined for him, Allah save us from the evil Amen. place. Amen. But they'll one day come out. Amen. This is the last one to be taken out. Amen. So he might just have a you know said the kalima once, or just one single deed that he's done, and that for that reason, the angels are told go and search. Is there anybody else? He said no, we can't find. He goes go search again. Three times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to say, make sure there's nobody with even a little bit of iman. And then they find him the last. In Bukhari commentary, Ibn Hajar mentions it. Third time they find him and they, they're taking him out. So this is what this is taking off now. He says, فَيُقَالُوا لَهُ إِن تَلِقْ فَدْخُلْ الْجَنَّةِ He says, now, you're at the end now. He says, you're the last one to be taken out. So he says, go into your jannah. He says, go. So he's been there a long time. And he's been just told now, you can go to paradise. So that's a good day, isn't it, for him? So he's gone and he's gone. He's, you don't need to be told twice. So he's gone walking, he's gone in, he's gone in, but he saw that all of the jannas, all the paradises have all been taken. Everybody's got their places and they're all full. Everyone, there's nothing, there's, there's no place, there's no vacancies. Everyone's taken their places. So he goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbi. Oh my Lord. All the people have taken all the places. Nothing left for me. It will be said to him, Do you remember that time when you used to be in dunya? That, that might seem like a really strange question. But just bear in mind that the time that he spent in, the grave. You've already forgotten about dunya. Yeah? Then you just your hasha just waiting inside the planes, waiting for this questioning to start. No, no, no. That's a long time. Then after that you've been spending time or he's been spending time inside the hellfire. That's a long time. So that question isn't there's, there's a reason why Allah's asking. He says, Jog your memory. Do you remember that place where you used to live? Um I visited it once. So, Yoman or Ba'da Yom. Day or part of a day? What, what, is, what are you asking about that? He says, Yeah, yeah. فَيَقُولُ نَعَمْ Yeah, I remember. فَيُقَالُ لَهُ تَمَنَّ Now he says, He says, Now keep that in mind and now wish for whatever you want. فَقَالَ فَيَتَمَنَّ So now he begins to say, mm, uh, In that case then, I used to remember the Burj Khalifa. Well, I, I want one bigger than that. And I want this and I want that. He's remembering his dunya. And he's saying all of these things that he's remembering of dunya. He says, well, well, actually the world was a big place. Can I just have the dunya? So, right? And he says all this. It's for you qalu lahu. And it will be said to him after that. Fa inna laka tamannaytahu. For you is whatever you ask for that day. Whatever you wish is granted. Wa ashrata adu'afi dunya. And ten times equal or more than, more than that. That's for the last person. What kind of a Jannah is waiting for you? The, the place of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah. 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 He doesn't even stop there for this person. Uh, it'd be interesting that we meet up with this person even <laughs> when he comes here for a meeting. Because he says, Qala, the, the hadith doesn't even finish there. For Yaqul. He's going to say to Allah, so Are you joking with me? Who is he saying that to? Allah, Allah. <laughs> he says, well, Antal Malik. He says, you, you, you're, you're, you're the, the sovereign king. Are you, jo- are you joking with me? You're going to give me not dunya, but dunya, 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 ten times. He says, Are you joking with me? Faqala, the Rabbi says, Walaqad ra'aytu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here I saw the Prophet وسلم, laugh at this person. He's laughing by this person, I what he was saying, who is he saying it to? And he was so humorous until his molars became exposed. The Prophet, وسلم, one thing we need to know that he was he made he he laughed at the things that the Sahaba laughed at. He made him feel at ease. He wasn't somebody who'd always be, No, I'm the Rasul of Allah. For a mission to go to no, you lot laughing of dunya we said they used to laugh about things that they would do in the days of jahiliya the sahaba and they would laugh and the prophets would laugh with them can you imagine that can you imagine that 
you know, like the almost like the things that the funny things that they would get up to in in the in the old days in in Mecca. Abu Bakr Siddiq would mention, and then some somebody else would mention all them early ones. They would mention, and they they'd be laughing amongst themselves, and the Prophet would would laugh along with them. Not till it got to a point where it's hours spent just laughing. That's not the way to do it. Everything in moderation. But point my point is, look how easy going the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was. And really, really easy going. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi you know, in, inspired that kind of uh, beauty around him sallallahu alaihi wasallam. One Amir ibn Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, the son of Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas mentions. Qala, qala Sa'dun. He says, so Qala Sa'd, i.e. his father. He mentioned the Rawi's his son, mentioning about Sayyidina Sa'd ibn Abi Waqas, the great companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu anhu wa arbahu. Laqad ra'aytu nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dahika yawm al-khandaq hatta badat nawajiduhu. On the day of Khandaq, the battle of Khandaq, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was found something humorous and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laughed until the mourners became exposed sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قَالَ قُلْتُ كَيْفَ كَانَ ضَحِكُهُ So, he was asked, he was asked for the son of Sayyidina Sa'ad, how was the smile that you, that you saw? He said, describe it to me. That's love, isn't it? And you're saying about the smile, but how was it? I want to know. Now, anybody who says, oh, I saw the Prophet Sallallahu in my dream, the first thing I'm asking is, like, describe him to me. You really, really want to know the details, isn't it? Because everyone comes with, gives you something else. قَالَ كَانَ رَجْلٌ مَعَهُ تُرْسٌ what was it that, that can make the Prophet smile or even laugh on a day like Khandak? And you, you know that all the confederates were all gathered together from the Arab tribes all against them on this side of the ditch and you know on the other side there were a huge, all the Arab tribes have all got together against them. There's nothing to laugh about there. But he says the Prophet there was, there was a, amongst the other side there was a person from the Kuffar and he had a turs, you know, he had a shield. It was a big shield, a long shield, if you will. That's what they call turs. Wa kana Sa'dun Ramian. And said, the Sa'd, my father, he was a, a sharpshooter. He was, he, was, he was an archer. Wa kana rajulu yaqulu kada wa kada bi tursi yugatti jabhatuhu. So this person was a, was a sneaky one behind this shield. So he would say something and then duck. He said, ah, you're not going to get me. And then he would say another th- a few words to provoke, and he would hide behind the shield. He says, I'm untouchable. I can say whatever I want. He would say something to provoke some sort of a reaction from the other side, and they would maybe pelt stones, or they would shoot an arrow, and, he, and they'd hide behind his uh, shield, and he'd get away with it all the time. And he thinks he's got the last laugh, because he, he'll be laughing behind the shield. فَنَزَعْلَهُ سَعْدٌ بِسَحْمٍ So Sina Sa'ad says, oh, is that it? He says, okay. So he gets his arrow, and he takes aim. Sayyidina Sa'ad is an archer of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And that day of Khandaq uh, on, on Ahud Sayyidina Sa'ad oh, Bravery of, of them people Allahu Akbar Sayyidina Sa'ad won it that day You really need to read about his story Sayyidina Sa'ad is an amazing person So he says he waited 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 As soon as he Took his forehead Over that shield he says, "Ramahu falam yuqtiru hadhi min hadhi minhu." Yani jabatuhu. He says, "As soon as his his forehead just came over, he says he shot it such precision that it hit him square right in the in the middle of his forehead, if you will." One qalab al rujulu wa shahla bi rijlihi. I don't know if I'm going to give it justice to the picture itself. The Prophet, uh, the, this is the Rawi's mention, sort of saying the sad. He's saying that he says. He says he went with such force that it made him uh, lose his senses. So he's, lo- he's lost his balance. He's, he's hit him square on his forehead. So he's gone back, on his, he's lying on his back, and his front two feet are up now in the air, and they're almost like they stood there, shala. So he's like literally staying there as if he's paralyzed his feet in the air. He says, فَضَحِكَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ حَتَّى بَدَتْ نَوَاجِدُهُ and the Prophet ﷺ began to laugh at the mother that they were seeing. He said, look at him, he was trying to be like snidey behind his, uh, his shield. And look how he ended up. And that was a funny thing. He said, what, what, is it that, uh, what is it that's making you laugh? Sayyidina Sa'ad ibn Waqqa saying. So he says, Min fa'lihi bir rajul. At what Sa'ad did to this man. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, and it's going to be beautiful, uh, you know, uh, story, the hadith is going to be... Ali ibn Rabi'ah 
Inshallah, we'll continue with that next week. But these are all ahadith they bring in, all on the, along the same topic. But the Prophet was humorous and he was funny, and it's almost like a, a comedy hour, Inshallah. But this is about the Prophet Sallallahu humor. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that beautiful, perfect balance that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had. And we have those that, you know, bring humor and joy to the hearts of people. And no doubt it does. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are serious and have, have seriousness when it comes to our dunya and our akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't, uh, uh, protect us from the heedless ones, although we are he ever heedless of the akhirah and our mission and our goal in life to worship Allah and his and, and emulate his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam wa akhra da'wana and alhamdulillahi wa alayhi